Hello and welcome everybody to the DWTV interview. Meet with us today is Highness Aga Khan, head of the Ismaili Muslims. His Highness is also head of the Aga Khan Development Network and in that capacity very active to support economic and social development in many regions and countries of the world. Highness, the world is shocked mm. by terror attacks again and again committed by people mm. who claim that they are fighting for Islam. Mm. You are an outstanding Muslim leader and you are calling Islam a religion of peace. Mm. That is a gross contradiction. Mm. Does it mean that Islam has two faces? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the first thing to keep in mind is that these situations represent a very, very small minority of the Muslim population around the world. Secondly, they are driven essentially by political issues rather than issues of faith. And I think it would be completely wrong to view these uh, situations as being representative of the faith of Islam. The Western world needs to look carefully at what are the forces at play to understand them and to make the difference between faith and issues which have nothing to do with the faith. Uh, we as Muslims would be expected to apply the same questions to situations such as Northern Ireland. If I as a Muslim uh, came to you and said, well, what are, has been happening in Northern Ireland is an equitable representation of the Catholic faith or the Protestant faith, you would look to me and you would say you're uneducated. I won't say that. <laughs> but nevertheless, Highness, in many Western countries, including Germany, yes. there is an opinion prevailing that Islam and democracy are not compatible. Mm. Mm. If that opinion is correct, mm. real understanding mm. and effective cooperation between the Muslim world and the West would be close to impossible. I agree. Well, I, uh, I see no conflict between the faith of Islam and democracy. There was a consultation process. The consultation process occurred in the Muslim community at the time, and uh, two notions were retained. One was consultation, and the other one was hereditary continuation of religious authority, as well as secular authority. The second issue that occurred was, it was consultation to achieve what? to achieve the best qualified people to lead the community. And I think that democracy is funded on those two concepts. It's funded on the, founded on the concept of consultation and it's founded on the concept of consultation for the purpose of merit, of defining the people best qualified to lead. So I see no conflict at all if I go back to the original construct of the Muslim community and how they dealt with the issues of leadership. Tolerance and pluralism mm. are ranking very high on your agenda mm. to improve the situation of human mankind. Mm. Is it because your own followers, the Ismailis as a minority, mm. are also discriminated against mm. them? Sometimes they are even called by other Muslims heretics. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I would uh, start by saying that in all faiths there are differences of opinion between one interpretation and, uh, and another. Today I wouldn't say that the Ismailis are discriminated against. And on the contrary, I think we are building more and more bridges with more and more different interpretations because the notion of pluralism in Islam is one which is well established. I mean, there are hadiths about uh, the number of interpretations which would uh, exist. So. Uh, the difference of interpretation is not an issue within Islam. I would go further. Uh, I would say that Islam is an encompassing faith. Uh, there is a very, very famous ayat in the Quran, for example, where Allah says, I have created you, meaning mankind, from one soul. Since September 11, mm. 2001, the West tried very hard to establish some kind of dialogue mm. between the West and the Muslim world. Mm. But more and more people are feeling frustrated because th there seems to be no real response, response from the Muslim side. Mm. 
They are waiting for the voices of moderate Muslims to raise their voices and speak out clearly and mm. loudly against terrorist in the name mm. and terrorism attacks in the name mm. of Islam. Right. Why don't we get these voices? Well, I think you, you are seeing these voices now more and more, uh, more and more uh, coming forward. I think the other thing to keep in mind is that there are forces at play within the Islamic world itself which do not encourage free communication, and particularly free communication on faith. The Aga Khan Development Network mm -hmm. is active in parts of the world right. where even there are no Ismaili followers at right. all. Right. What's the purpose of that? Our role, I think, is to contribute to development on a national scale, or on a local scale, if it's an enormous country, or on a regional scale. And we have to select the scale which is appropriate. But we are inclusive, and it, that is the nature of Islam. How much money do you, does your Aga Khan Development Network spend on the mm. various and broad variety mm. of development mm. projects mm. in many parts of the world? And where does that money come from? Mm. We are probably spending something of the order of $200 million a year. And the resources come from a number of different backgrounds. They come from development agencies, uh, such as uh, the agencies in Germany, international agencies, uh, therefore national, international. They come from imamate resources themselves. They come from... Sorry, that means from your own from the, private the institution, sources. the institutional income. And so it's a, it's a number of different resources. It comes from donations. More and more we have uh, people who want to associate with programs who make individual donations. So it's a multiplicity of sources. You are a Muslim leader and the Aga Khan Development Network mm. is a Muslim foundation. Mm. But you're working together in several fields with the German non-Muslim government. Yes. What are the common grounds for that? Well, I, I, I'm very happy that there are strong common grounds because uh, Germany is generous towards the developing world. Uh, it analyzes the problems and seeks solutions very much in the same direction as we are ourselves. Uh, we, I think, have had good partnerships and they are growing. They're covering more and more fields, including culture, which is a new, a new resource now. At least I think so. So uh, that's, that's where we're working together. And through Germany, we're also working with the European Union. Heinz, what are the hopes to overcome terrorism for good? Yes. Well, first of all, I would uh, say let's try and resolve the issues that are causing terrorism. And the issues generally are political frustration. They are not issues of faith. And what we have in the Middle East is a situation that was not born from the faith of Islam. What we have in Kashmir was an issue that was not born from the faith of Islam. What we have in Afghanistan is an issue that was not born from the faith of Islam. So we have to resolve the essence of the issues, which are the political issues. Once these centers of frustration and that carry people to despair, then I think we'll be able to address it. In the meanwhile, let us build everywhere we can to construct a better world in the Muslim world and in the developing world generally. That's got to be our goal. Highness, thank you for this interview. And I think we all wish you success in your development activities. Thank you very much. Steve. Thank you. Thank you.